Welcome to the Stratcom podcast series. I'm Ahmad Kablan. I'm a presenter at TRT World. I host a show called Double Check. Today we'll be talking about communication strategies from areas of crisis. I have with me Alkan Rahimov, who is the Deputy Regional Director of the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Society's Regional Office for Europe. Mr. Rahimo, thank you for joining us. Can you talk about what type of crises the IFRC is involved in mainly? Is it war zones? Is it natural disasters? Is it the refugee crisis? So where are you most involved, your organization? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Amar Bey. And it's uh, really a privilege to represent the IFRC and also member of National Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies. Uh, during this uh, interview. As you may know, Red Cross Red Crescent Network uh, with the members of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies, it's one of the biggest, or if not the biggest humanitarian network globally. It means that in almost in each country of the world, we have National Red Cross Red Crescent Society, which means that those National Red Cross Red Crescent Societies are there before, during, and after disaster. So regardless of, of the disaster, of its scale and the nature, in majority of the countries, those Red Cross, Red Crescent societies immediately respond or involve in a preparedness or follow-up response. And IFRC as an institution, which is a membership organization, support coordination of international humanitarian assistance and also provide technical and financial support to this Red Cross, Red Crescent societies to deliver much needed assistance during disasters. So can you give us a a real life example of a real life crisis and how the IFRC communicated it effectively? It's very important to note that the whole approach of the communication uh, of the IFRC is very much based on the community engagement and the accountability uh, approach. Because Red Crescent societies are present in the communities. For example, we can bring example of Turkish Kizilay, which implements at the moment the world's largest cash program in support to the migration crisis and the millions of the uh, refugees and the migrants arriving on the territory of Turkey. By presence throughout the communities, by recognition and having a trust of the community, the Turkish Red Crescent is reaching out the most vulnerable. IFRC is then there, together with the Turkish Red Crescent, to appeal to the international donor community and to mobilize the resources which are then provided through the Turkish Red Crescent to those people in need. We are talking about a very large-scale program here, but I can also touch upon about smaller floods, earthquake, small migration-related crises on the border here and there, where Red Cross and Red Crescent societies have access And that is, I think, the biggest difference with other organizations that we are present in the country through the network of this Red Cross and Red Crescent societies. And by having access, they also have a responsibility to communicate in such a way that the public trusts. So you can look at the moment at the situation of the at the Polish and Belarus border Mm -hmm. and Belarus Red Cross has access to the area and provides life-saving support to those migrants stranded during the winter time. And uh, recognition by the authorities, but also acceptance by the public of those Red Cross, Red Crescent societies, make those messages more acceptable and reliable for the wider public, but also for affected communities. And when we talk about communication, how much does the IFRC rely on because obviously it's mainly a volunteer network that the organization has. How much does it rely on using social media for that form of communication? Uh, You're touching a very important subject here. For example, if we look at the information in the 21st century, as as essential as the shelter, food, water, uh, when you see people on the move and uh, reaching to the safe areas, one of the first things, of course, they... They require, for example, can I charge my mobile phone? Can I have access to internet? Before even asking support for the food or shelter or the water. That has become a life-saving tool, one can say, when we're talking provision and information almost as an aid. Of course, social media tools are uh, driving factor behind 
of many information and communication approaches. Red Cross, Red Crescent societies, I would say, and specifically in Europe and, and Central Asia, very active on Facebook, on TikTok, on Instagram. Naturally, IFRC as international organization have those tools also in its possession, helping the Red Cross, Red Crescent societies to uh, deliver the key messages. But it is important to deliver the message with a context driven in the language of the community and the relevant to the context. Therefore, in majority of the cases, the message is delivered by the Red Cross Red Crescent societies. Yes, you're right. If we look at the, let's say, probably it's not the right word to say, the workforce, majority of the people in Red Cross and Red Crescent societies involved in the response, those are the volunteers. But they're also a professional core of staff people, staff at the headquarters and the branches of those Red Cross Red Crescent societies, who are also trained in the communication approaches, and especially when it comes to communication uh, within the communities. So all around the world, people know about the Red Cross and Red Crescent. And you talked about this, you know, it's recognized, the government recognizes it. The people are very familiar with the symbols and the logo of the Red Cross and Red Crescent. They know they're coming in for help and for support. But there are also many other smaller organizations, maybe with just a handful of people who are also trying to help resolve crisis and they don't have any recognition they don't they aren't known by society they're not recognized so do you think that they have a role to play within crisis communication as well or it should be left to some of the most recognized organizations like the red cross and red crescent it's very interesting because they will always be players in the humanitarian field it's impossible to prevent people from self-organizing or establishing NGOs or looking for the humanitarian cause and only limit them to the, to the certain framework of the organizations. Of course, as a representative of IFRC and the network of Red Cross and Red Crescent societies, I will be definitely advocating more for professional approaches to the communication, not to have the information which the public cannot trust because we're through the presence in the community and this through the respect which community gives to those organization communication which is spread is more trustful but as you said the humanitarian field and organizations which work there it's very diverse so if you look at the spectrum of ngos or international non-governmental organizations functioning there could be thousands of those but at the end of the day the ones who are permanently in the area they probably the handful of those organizations so some organization just arrive, deliver life-saving support, and uh, during the disaster, many countries would, ne- would not say no to such a life-saving support arriving in the country. But then when disaster ends, the one which are left with those communities will be again very few organizations. So therefore, as a Red Cross and Red Crescent, we will engage uh, with those uh, stakeholders uh, in the field but also in the field of that disaster. But at the same time, we very much stick to the fundamental principles of Red Cross and and the Red Crescent and our rules and the procedures and the communication. And one other aspect, I guess, that's very important is what is the relationship with your organization and the media? Because, for example, you mentioned the Poland-Belarus border. Now, obviously, there are also many journalists there. And when we read the news or watch the news, we do see the images of people there who need help, who need support. So when that is shown on mainstream media, does this help provide access for the Red Cross and Red Crescent? Is there a communication between the media and your organization? I would say from the, we look at it from the humanitarian perspective. Media is very, has, it's a powerful tool to get the message across. But it's also a powerful tool for us to resource emergency appeal, for example. At the moment, IFRC, we have emergency appeal launched for the Belarus and neighboring countries. We have a number of emergency appeals, uh, which is launched, for example, in the, in the Balkan region, in support of the uh, um, Red Cross Society of the uh, Bosnian and Herzegovina. We have been running emergency appeals in support of the displaced people on the territory of the Turkey and other countries as well. Media visibility, and especially in, uh, in the 
through the social media channels, using also social uh, media and not only TV channels, gives opportunity for Red Cross and Red Crescent first to get attention to the humanitarian crisis as such, and the second to mobilize the resources. Uh, when it came to the access, when it came to the work with the government, when it came uh, to the role and mandate of Red Cross, Red Crescent societies, as I've mentioned, they're already in the country before the crisis takes place. Usually the uh, activities and the mandate regulated by the national legislation or specific Red Cross, Red Crescent law or the governmental act, giving them auxiliary role to the public authorities. So therefore they are recognized before it gets into the media. But media helps a lot in terms of the outlining the humanitarian problems, but also helping the Red Cross, Red Crescent societies to mobilize the resources, which then they uh, channeled in the form of humanitarian aid and then support those people stranded. And when we talk about moving into crisis zones, within your organization, uh, there must be a kind of a direct plan as soon as you know the IFRC goes in, who's going to be doing what, which volunteers are going to head where, you know, who's going to be distributing the aid, etc. So when we talk about that plan, um, does that plan change for every crisis? Or can you say there's, you know, one general plan that all of the volunteers are aware of, and that's generally followed? I'm just curious about, you know, the steps, the instructions that need to be followed once entering a crisis zone. If we look at the emergency response action of Red Cross and Red Crescent societies, we need to differ those from the ones where national Red Cross, Red Crescent sites ask for international or some of the emergencies which are dealt nationally. Not every emergency requir requires international actors to come in. We have countries where Red Cross and Red Crescent societies have their roles and responsibilities and also capacities to respond. But also we have the countries where we don't have Red Cross and Red Crescent societies with enough capacities to respond. Then, of course, international Red Cross and Red Crescent assistance come. With that comes trainings. With that comes support. With that, come, with that comes disaster preparedness. So national societies are not awaiting for emergencies, disasters, crises to happen in order to develop certain rules and procedures in response to that emergency. There are cases when national society have different mandates and when certain level of disaster happens, it could be civil unrest, for example, or civil war within the country, which is a bit different from responding to earthquake or floods and the landslides. But if you look at the concept uh, of, the, of the response, I would say 99% of the National Red Cross and Red Crescent societies will have emergency procedures, which also will include communication component. And at the areas where they lack capacity or require additional training, International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies either provides direct support or support communication between those Red Cross, Red Crescent Societies, finding expertise and making sure that it's available at the country. When we talk about the IFRC, of course, you know, operating all around the world in some very remote areas as well, when there is, there are places there are no uh, internet, or you know, we talked about social media. So if there is no internet, or there's no television, or places that are purely people are um, getting their news only through radio, uh, in areas like that, does the plan change about how to communicate effectively within a crisis if a crisis occurs in such a place? It's very interesting and bring us a bit to the beginning of a discussion we had. This is community engagement and accountability approach, which is used throughout the programming of the IFRC. So it's important for us to remain engaged with the communities, to know ecosystem of the communication within that community. So what's the most efficient ways on the communication when it comes to that particular area of the region? because there is a branch, the volunteer groups are operating, they know what is the best way to reach out to the community in terms of the health emergency or disaster or flood or earthquake. Even in the um, countries which developed communication um, capacities, there are issues 
where the communities would still uh, expect face-to-face -face discussion on the sensitive matters instead of calling to the call centers or uh, having these open free toll lines where they can call or send messages over the Facebook, for example. So there's still element of the human to human communication which exists. And that which makes Red Cross Red Crescent is a bit different from any other network in the world that we don't operate through the offices only present at the headquarters. We are present in the communities. So if that community lacks access to the internet, and let's say the country is not yet there with delivery of the internet coverage throughout all remote areas and radio will be the tool to use, the National Red Cross Red Crescent Society will use the tool of the radio. And if they will need the support in order technically to do so or financial support, IFRC will do it at most in order to mobilize the resources. Those are community-based um, initiatives. And uh, this is also is a part of a discussion at the grand bargain that localization should be a priority. But it's very important that information shared in the right time, in understandable way, and also from the trusted source, because then it saves lives and uh, saves <laughs> hundreds of thousands of lives if we have right time, understandable way, and uh, from the trusted source. And whether this trusted source is a Red Crescent or Red Cross branch or radio or internet or face-to-face -face discussion, it doesn't matter much as far as far as it, it's covered the needs of that community. And just to sum it up now, uh, when we talk about the IFRC, so can you just sum up so the best uh, means of communication in these crisis areas and how you think uh, this may change in the future, especially with the growth of technology. Perhaps social media will be used more. Um, perhaps access to smartphones will increase. So what are the best methods to sum it up? And how do you see this going into the future? Definitely the 21st century changed a lot in terms of technologies and uh, the way communication is done uh, through the different messengers, uh, social media uh, applications and um, information through the social media is reaching out to the key decision makers uh, in many cases much faster before the uh, our organization can put let's say a press release even the fastest way we do the press release any short video posted on the social media already gives the understanding to the world what is happening in this or that part of the world when it comes to the migration crisis or impact of the earthquake or impact of tsunami, impact of the hurricanes, for example, uh, we see situations in different parts of the world, including Asia Pacific these days, when there is a, such a, a big level of, of the destruction after the, those um, not man-made disasters. But still, regardless of the technology, regardless of new ways of the working, volunteers, presence in the communities, and Red Cross, Red Crescent remaining to be trusted source of information will remain at the core of our work because community is at the core of our humanitarian activity. And the tools which are used to that, it will only amplify the messaging we are sending uh, within the communities. So, and then the most important that this communication is not one way. And this is approach we will always take uh, in the future. And we are taking at the present. It's not enough to communicate about community. It's important to communicate together with representatives of that community. So I think this is an important consideration to be made. Alkan Rahimov, thank you so much for giving us those details and the inner workings of uh, such an important organization like the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies. Thanks for joining the Stratcom podcast. Thank you, Marbe. Thank you very much for this interview.